2023 really has turned out to be a big year for Sonic. Just when you thought there couldn't be any more content coming out in the same year, suddenly we get the very hurried release schedule of Sonic Dream Team. And this game, being an Apple exclusive, basically a mobile game, surprisingly has a lot of merits behind it and does things that I've been wishing the series to have attempted for a very long time. If you haven't heard, Sonic Dream Team is an Apple Arcade exclusive game that is in partnership with Apple that brings a new short story about dreams and wonderlands to the Sonic environment where you'll be using six playable characters to traverse open-ended levels to collect items and progress your way through until you can defeat the final boss. And with that in mind, considering this is a smaller scope of game compared to something like Sonic Frontiers, I think it actually does a remarkably good job at achieving its goal. Just from a surface level production value point of view, from what you can see presented, this game looks pretty well. There's a good unifying art style that leans into the whimsical nature of Dreamlands that helps everything seem to fit together rather than a bunch of jarring assets. The character models themselves though is one of the best presentation aspects to Sonic Dream Team. For the longest time there's been a group of people, myself included, complaining about the character models the modern Sonic games have been doing ever since 2011 or so where the character model of let's say Sonic the Hedgehog seems to have stagnated and then somehow regressed over the years because before the character models for all the cast would update and change every two or three installments of a main game but then once you hit the 2010s they just stopped doing that they were only edited slightly between games and in Sonic's case they tried to classify him, make him more like classic Sonic as seen in Generations. So the shade of blue would become lighter, the quills shorter, the legs stubbier, etc, etc. And it kind of made him look lame, <laughs> to my, to my, in my opinion, and to a lot of other people. But here, Sonic's got a new model, and you can tell when you, if you just look at his face, and then look at it compared to, let's say, Frontier Sonic, it's obvious that they've given him a new model. Uh, they've extended the quill length again, which is nice. I just prefer it that way. Quills aside, the biggest thing is the face. They actually animate his facial muscles a lot more than the current modern Sonic rig allows. But here, they've built expressions into all the characters, and it allows for cutscenes and just normal conversations to feel a lot more dynamic and natural looking, rather than the stiff, stilted animations we're used to. The only real downside I see is with the idols. Uh, now, idle animations, I guess you can consider there's two categories. There's idle animations that play when you haven't pressed an action on your controller for a while, such as when someone stretches or checks their feet or something like that. And then idle, as in the instant you stop doing anything, what does the character do? And so for the in-betweening ones, where they're checking their shoes or something, these are all fine. The characters are animated, they're doing something nice, like cream and cheese will talk to each other or something like that. But for the, they're just standing there, Sonic is still using the stupidly stiff animation, if you can call it that, from Sonic Forces, where it looks like he's standing with a stick just strapped to his back and he can't move at all. And it looks really unnatural and they used it in Frontiers, and now they're using it here. And I don't know why Sega thinks this is just a good standard. It's terrible. It's barely animated. You could just make it a still frame. It would look the same at a distance. It's terrible, and considering how good the animation is everywhere else, I have no idea why they chose to use that. But then it seems like they're trying to give it to Tails as well. The pose Tails strikes when you're not doing anything is almost the same one as Sonic does. Sega, this is not the way forward. This is terrible. At least in other games where he was stood still, his arms were lax and you could see him breathing a bit more clearly. Here, they just look like they've been petrified and it's a pretty bad look. Knuckles is actually all right. He just chills with his arms down. Uh, which, again, it's not very dynamic, but it looks more natural, at least, than what Sonic and Tails have got going on. 
but the characters as a whole, animations aside, are also just handled a lot better here in the small story we get from this game. They are more like their old selves, they're playing with each other, they're trying to be helpful. Uh, even Knuckles and Rouge tease each other again for the first time in I don't even know how long. It was nice to see. Again, the story isn't huge. This is a smaller game, clearly made by a smaller team with a smaller budget. So don't go expecting Frontiers 2. But in context to what we've got, yeah, the characters are really nice. But all of this stuff we've been talking about doesn't even get to the gameplay. Now, this is where the tragedy of Sonic Dream Team comes in. Due to its nature, I have not been able to play Sonic Dream Team. And you can forget about me buying an Apple device just to play this one game. However, I have watched and observed a lot of the gameplay and it seems to be fairly good. It's not going to be the same type of gameplay you'll be getting from Frontiers if that's what you're looking for. This takes a step back towards the more platforming focused days of the Sonic series. So basically everything before Unleashed. The characters are slower, and then there's a boost button, but the boost is also slower than what you would hope for from a modern day boost. But I don't think that's a bad thing. For example, Sonic Adventure 1 is clearly a slower game than Sonic Unleashed, but I never had the feeling that I was slow when I played as Sonic, especially when running at top speed, but he was also more controllable. Whereas in a game like Unleashed, once you boost, Yes, you can still move, but your movement is a lot more restricted. Here though, in Sonic Dream Team, from what I can see, the boost is still fairly responsive to your adjustments whilst using it because it's a lower top speed than a boost game boost. And then since everything's been brought back a bit in the speed category, the levels have been designed to be more explorative and filled with more platforming moments. So you're allowed to go up, down, right, left, there are multiple paths with multiple secrets, and the game is really built around exploring. A bit like Super Mario 64, each act has multiple mini objectives, and doing these mini objectives grants you a dream orb or something like that, which you use to unlock stuff for the next level. So you don't have to do every mini objective, but you do need to do more than one. This means that although the game is smaller than a normal modern main game, it has a bit more playtime than you would expect because it uses its levels in a better, more efficient way. You get more out of each level. Now, if you don't find the mini objectives interesting, then you'll have a problem because that's the main meat of the game. There are a couple varieties. One of them is a standard time attack. One of them is collecting multiple orbs. One of them is collecting a specific one somewhere, so forth, so on. Um, there's even the treasure hunting style missions from Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. But the playable characters themselves are split into three categories, Sonic Hero style. You've got speed types, flying types, and power types, though power type really is glide type in this game. Sonic and Amy fit into speed, so they can homing attack, light speed dash, boost, that sort of thing. Amy in this game is a complete gameplay clone of Sonic completely identical no differences the hammer is only a cosmetic she is just a sonic clone in this game so for everyone who enjoyed amy in advance 2 i guess your time has come but yeah if you preferred amy having a distinct playset, that's not here it's not in the scope of this game which is understandable they did the same thing in sonic heroes so that's what you get Tails and Cream, therefore, are the flying ones. They lose things like the light speed dash, but in return, they can fly for a bit. And then Knuckles and Rouge, similar story, but they can climb on walls and glide around. Overall, this is a fine way to do it. There's nothing wrong with splitting your roster like that. It gives you a choice on who you want to be, and it really does seem to indicate the days of Sonic only are finally long and gone behind us. Some levels, I think, maybe all of them, I didn't check too far into that, but at least on some, you can switch who you're playing as during the level as well. Again, sort of like Sonic Heroes, which helps you explore. If you want to collect multiple things in one run, you can do a mixture of Sonic and Rouge to get around places, for an example. I will be honest though, a lot of the game does seem a bit simple, which I'm sure is partly due to the fact that the game needs to be able to be played on mobile devices or even just a TV. So it can't be too complicated. Rings magnetize to you from a fair distance, but honestly, that's not a huge deal. 
Uh, but moreover, the bosses that you encounter, very simple, very easy. The designs of the bosses, very fun and cool though. They did a great job with the visuals in general. I didn't really talk about the environment design, but yeah, you're in a dreamland and it looks nice. The soundtrack is meant to be, again, a bit complimentary to these visuals. It's nice and soft. Uh, it doesn't really get super amped from what I've heard at any point, which is a downside for me. I obviously like my soundtracks with a lot of energy in them, but this game's going for a dreamlike feel. The soundtrack assists in that purpose. The environments look nice and the bosses, the unique original bosses, do look pretty good. Especially the final boss. <laughs> that one looks very good. And then the new character, Areem, for the dreamscape. She's, she's fine. She's fine character. Pretty good. Not around for long because this is a short game with a short story. But I think she's fine. Not sure what you would do with her in the future, but hey. Yeah, fine character. And then Cream the Rabbit gets a lot of use, or focus I should say, in this story. Because it's through Cream that Eggman's able to kick off his conquering of the dream world and, and cause all the events that start this game off. So for Cream fans, this is finally your time. Her moment is back in the spotlight. She exists again. And to a lesser extent, it's nice to have Rouge here too. But finally more characters that aren't just Sonic, Tails, Knuckles and Amy are being included. Overall, Sonic Dream Team is a really solid inclusion to the Sonic lineup. Nice simple game, pick up and play, doesn't take too much time, the levels are nice platforming experiences, and the story's alright. But as I've said, the tragedy is it's only on Apple, which makes sense because it was an exclusively funded deal, but if you don't have an Apple device, you're not going to be able to play it. And even then, I'm not deluded, it is at the end of the day a mobile game. I would want a bit more meat and depth in an experience for a console or PC release anyway, so I'm not too beat up about it. But if this is another indication of the inner workings of Sega changing, then this is a good sign. Although it does bring up some interesting comparisons with Frontiers, like why are we still using the Forces character model for Sonic? Why are we still using these bad animations for Sonic when clearly a smaller team in less time, I think it was what, two years of development, managed to do what we've been asking for for ages from the main team. Big questions, no answers. But that's all I have to say on this topic. So thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Have you been able to play Sonic Dream Team or are you like me where you can only watch from the sides? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope you have a great day and to see you next time. This is the Mighty Emperor signing off.